Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve bloating, gas, and digestive issues so they can look and feel their best. What was the last time you checked the expiration date of the pills in your cabinet? If you're like me, at some point, you probably saw a bottle of pills that were expired and wondered if they were still okay to take. I know I'm not the only one because back when I used to work in the pharmacy, customers would bring in these large bags or even boxes of expired medications to dispose. Of. Last week, I made a video on what is the best time to take probiotics in relation to food. If you haven't seen it already, there's a link here to check it out. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, drug expiration dates reflect the time period which the product is known to remain stable, which means it retains its strength, quality, and purity when it's stored according to its labeled storage conditions. If a medication is still safe and effective, you won't want to throw it out. On the other hand, if the expired medication won't work or is unsafe, you definitely should not use it. This video is going to answer the question, are prokinetics safe and effective to use after their expiration date? We'll look into a bunch of research studies and see if we can figure this out. Why does this even matter? The reason is, even though dead probiotics may provide some benefits, studies suggest that probiotics likely offer us the most benefit while they're still alive. And we want to make sure the supplements we're taking are actually doing something. Throughout this video, we'll also take into consideration different strains of probiotics and proper and improper storage conditions, such as not refrigerating something that is meant to be refrigerated. And then stick around to the end of the video because I'll be giving you my four biggest takeaways on this topic. All right, quick announcement. If you're dealing with SIBO and are trying to get rid of the bloating, gas, and digestive symptoms that come with it, I'm taking on a very small number of clients for the September kickoff of my new program, SIBO Shortcut. It officially goes live September 1st, and it's been eight months in the making, so I'm very excited to be releasing it. It includes my three frameworks that have been proven to be effective for SIBO, specific treatment protocols, live daily support from me, and a whole lot more. SIBO Shortcut comes with a free 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it risk-free. Pre-registration is now open, and already at the time I'm filming this, there are only a few spots left available. For more information, click on the link in the description below and reserve your spot today. And back to the video. Let's look at the research. This massive 2020 study from the FEMS Microbes Journal looked at how well 33 different probiotics survive after expiration date. The majority of the probiotic strains were either Lactobacillus, Bifidobacterium, or Saccharomyces boulardii, which makes sense because these three are the most commonly available probiotics. 26 of 33 of these probiotics were stored according to the manufacturer recommendations, and seven of the 33 probiotics were not stored according to the manufacturer recommendations. This study found that overall, only two of the seven probiotics stored not according to the manufacturer's instructions had viability. This means that only two out of the seven, or 28% of the samples, still had live probiotics when tested past their expiration date. On the other hand, 19 of the 26, or 73% of samples, still had live probiotics past the expiration date when they were stored under proper recommended storage conditions. The samples that were stored properly all had at least 65% of the original amount of bacteria labeled on the bottle, and the majority of them had over 80% of the original amount of bacteria labeled on the bottle. Some of these samples actually had over 100% of the original starting amount this is likely due to the manufacturer adding more than what was labeled on the bottle in case some of these bacteria died over time. The study went on to mention that probiotics formulated in capsules in a metal container were found to have significantly higher viability compared with a similar product in a plastic bottle. Metal in this case would be aluminum blister packs. If you're not familiar with these, they're basically the aluminum foil sheets where you have to press each individual pill out. Apparently, plastic bottles allow oxygen to pass through a lot more than metal does. And in this study, the probiotics that were stored in plastic bottles had a lot fewer probiotics surviving than these metal blister packs. Main takeaways from the study. One, storage conditions matter a lot. Follow the instructions on the bottle for storage as close as you can. Two, no specific strains of bacteria seem to survive better or worse. All three of the lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and saccharomyces boulardii 
all had samples that survived well and ones that didn't. And as a final note, when I say these probiotics in this study have been expired, they have really been expired. Of the samples taken in this research study, they've been expired on average for 11 years each, which is a really long time. Therefore, it seems like probiotics would probably still be alive at the expiration date, assuming they were stored properly. Looking more into how storage affects probiotic survival, because this seems to be the key factor so far. This 2009 study from the International Journal of Dairy Technology looked at how well bifidobacteria was affected by temperature and water. It found that a significant positive correlation was observed between water activity and natural logarithm of the inactivation rate constant of bifidobacterium powder, indicating that water activity induced lower stability of bifidobacteria in powder form. Also, higher temperature condition induced lower survival rate. It's assumed that you're not bathing your probiotics in water, so basically what this all means is water in humidity, lower probiotic survival rate, and higher temperatures, lower probiotic survival rate. This 2017 article by World Scientific News looked at how important packaging and storage was for probiotics. It found that the temperature and relative humidity of the atmosphere may affect the gas permeability of the packaging material and thereby affect viability. Most dairy probiotics and other products are stored and sold on the market in plastic packaging with high oxygen permeability. This poses a serious problem to the growth and survival of the probiotic. Basically, it's saying that plastic bottles are not an ideal container for probiotics lasting a long time. Another potential factor that this study mentions is micro-encapsulation of probiotics. Micro-encapsulation is a scientific method they do on the capsule to help protect the probiotic better and also help it survive stomach acids. Some probiotics use this method. This study indicates that micro-encapsulation has been reported as a technology that can provide protection for sensitive cultures from high oxygen levels, manufacture, storage, freezing, and during transit through the human gastrointestinal tract. Basically, it's like a high-tech transporter and bodyguard for the probiotics. In conclusion, takeaway number one, it seems apparent that probiotics can definitely survive way past their expiration date listed on the bottle. As a quick disclaimer, currently expired probiotics are considered to be not safe to consume past the expiration date, despite containing viable or live cells due to the lack of safety studies. Takeaway number two, storing probiotics in the refrigerator seems like the best option according to these studies. Takeaway number three, using a low humidity drawer or top shelf in the refrigerator may be the best place in the refrigerator to store probiotics to lower the humidity. And takeaway number four, metal packaging or aluminum blister packs seem to protect probiotics better than plastic bottles and glass bottles. Based on the research here, if you had to decide between two products, I would choose the one in the blister pack compared to a plastic or glass bottle. So by storing probiotics properly, you may be getting way more benefit from them. That is all for today. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you're new to my channel, I post a new full-length video every Monday evening and then YouTube shorts throughout the week. Please leave comments and questions on the chat thread down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.